did you look at executive function as well? I mean, you mentioned memory, but did you look yeah, at executive yeah, a range, function? A range of memory tasks were done in, in, in the, so we did a, you know, as well as the, as well as the aging study, more importantly, we did a major study in, in, in mild to moderate Alzheimer patients. This was done in the States, mm -hmm. in the US, uh, in Texas, um, mm -hmm. medical school. So this is it done independently of, of myself as an, you know, as an academic. Uh, so they, yeah, it was, a, a, I think, what are we talking about? It was, it was around about 70 or 80, N equals 70 or 80 individuals. It was a sham blind, double blind sham controlled trial. So when, when I say sham, what, what the individual had was a, was a helmet, basically, you know, was looked like the the real one um and but it, it when it, the button was pressed the light they didn't receive any of the infrared light the, be the beauty of infrared light is invisible so you can't you can't see it right so you can do a true sham controlled trial mm -hmm. and the beauty of the trial also it was done at home so it was it was uh mm -hmm. you know you could you, you basically it's not like you have to go into a hospital or you know, to take a drug, you know, you, you basically can you treat yourself at home, obviously with the help of a, a carer. Um, right. Uh, and yeah, so that trial showed uh, remarkable results, actually. I mean, it showed basically uh, a range of memory, memory yeah, performances. And um, the, the one, with, the major one was the so-called mini mental score uh, uh, assessment. Which is a assessment of between zero and thirty. Basically, most of us, hopefully, are in the, the high thirties uh, at that end of the of the of the scale. Uh, when you develop, when you're in the mild to moderate Alzheimer's, you're down in the low twenties, high teens in terms of the number. Um, and what we found with the trial was a remarkable, nearly five unit improvement over eight weeks with no side effects which is unheard of mm. basically as i said this was sham controlled in the sham treated group there was you know an insignificant change basically in in memory performance so that was a remarkable you know first start i mean it's a small trial you know relatively small trial but it was a remarkable start and since then this was done three four years ago we, it was published uh, a number of other trials have done have used our wavelength and other wavelengths of infrared light to show again improvement in memory scores, executive function based memory, different types of memory assessments. Um, have have you know, the, the 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 evidence is growing significantly across the board and different types of memory uh, as well has been looked at and. Uh, yeah, so that that that's an ongoing, you know, build up of, of evidence, if you like, to back up what, what we're talking about. I'm currently putting ethics together to run a, a similar, basically the same trial in the UK. Um, fortunately, I was able to get some funding to run 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 a trial in the UK, and that will be the first trial to be run in the UK. Actually, we we are a bit behind, more than a bit behind the rest of the world, actually. So there's number of many trials in say Australia and and the US going on with with a range of wavelengths, including our own, showing you know again the the evidence base. I th I think I did a quick literature search recently, and I found about twenty five papers with 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 our wavelength range uh, being used uh, and showing positive effects. Both many of them were clinical, and many and also you know preclinical studies. So the evidence is building, um, and I, I need to uh, emphasise also. During the first lockdown of COVID, I I suggested that this this approach would be useful for for long for long COVID, particularly the brain effects of long COVID, which are, you know, brain fog, memory problems, etc. Um, and I, you know, gave, again it was a rational thinking, you know, all the effects we talked about were relevant to the disease. And in fact, this actual wavelength that we're talking about was first used 20 years ago to treat cold sores. So herpes simplex so is an antiviral mm -hmm. approach. And in fact, it's an NHS approved 
treatment for cold sores even now still so the initial use of the of this particular wavelength and this tr particular treatment was actually as a viral treatment so as it turns out yeah a, a clinical trial was done recently uh, in long covid to show again positive effects of the of this wavelength for the various reasons we talked about so it's also an antiviral mm -hmm. um, um, uh, approach and it, again it some of the mechanisms we talked about some of these the chaperone proteins hsp70 is one of the chaperone proteins is an antiviral mm -hmm. mechanism nitric oxide is actually an antiviral rep also does modify viral replication so there's various reasons why um the light therapy would be useful for for, for long covid brain fog uh, approaches so yeah mm -hmm. so that gives you a bit of a flavor of some of the things that are going on and and why i guess do you have any idea when this would be in the clinic i mean how close are we to having it available that's a good question i mean again i think it depends on the, the country at the moment it's every country is different mm -hmm. um, in terms of their acceptance of, of the the approach, like I said, there's enlightened countries like uh, Australia and and the US that are prepared to to trial it and and work it through. Uh, unfortunately, the the UK is, like I said, well behind in the in the in the in the process. So, um, in terms of the uh, you know what we we're ultimately aiming for, it's only in the UK is is to have an you know an NHS approved nice approved device that can be used routinely uh we're a little away from that i would say mm -hmm. because obviously we've got to do the trials um and also we've got to build yeah build up the confidence of of nice for this for this process um whereas in you know other countries like particularly in australia for example that they are definitely you know they they could be seriously using this in the next year or two you know we're talking short very short term uh and this and america and the us again they they know there's they they will be looking at this before we will in the in the uk um i mean the the thing is the devices are available so actually for in for patient for people with with you know who want to look at it in terms of their normal aging or you know health or that or if they have a disease that, that they can purchase the device uh, or the devices uh, now. So mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, for more, for, for, but for, for, for general use across the public, yeah, I think certainly in the UK, we're looking at at least four or five years mm -hmm. um, yeah, to be at that acceptance point. I think what will happen, you know, once we run this first trial, things will go like that mm. in terms of the UK. You know, if we can basically get the ethics and we can run the trial and we assert, the assumption is we get the same results we got in the US, um, people will start to wake up and actually see and things will move a lot quicker. Um, and, yeah, because it's a no, sort of a no-brainer because, they, you know, they will realize you know the current therapies that are coming through they, they, there are one or two useful things other than the amyloid uh drugs um which will die a death very mm -hmm. soon um there are one or two other useful things coming through including like i said i've talked to you before this session now we there, we have a drug um regime that that uh, is is looking very promising um so, you know, things will start to move in, in the generally in treatment of Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative diseases relatively quickly in the next two or three years. And light yeah. therapy hopefully will be part of that. Um, again, it's just to get over that initial, I don't know what it is, risk averse uh, attitude to light therapy and scepticism. You know, it has a long history. It has a, a checkered history over the years. Um but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, when they start to, to be evidence is building over the next year or two, um, they will have to take note. 
at the end of the day because you know to have a treatment that gives you any sort of clinical benefit with no side effects relatively quick effects um easy to use at home you know yeah then, then it's sort of you know it, it should come i'm hopeful before i retire <laughs> <laughs> That, that it that, that this would be taken seriously certainly in the uk mm. uh, because that, it, yeah i mean that certainly is very optimistic given how little progress has been made in the last 25 yeah. years or more absolutely yeah no I've, we're in the actually generally not just the, with the light therapy we're in a we're in a quite a good place there are a number of again rational uh things coming through some of them mm. are actually what we call reuse, i.e. drugs that have been used for other things, uh, particularly in, mm. say, in Parkinson's. Um, there's a couple of drugs that uh, one was a diabetic drug, and we you know there's a, there's a couple of couple of things that are coming through that look really promising and gone into phase three, and you know they make a lot of sense to me as a rational pharmacologist. So I think I'm, I'm I am very optimistic actually uh, that some you know. In one way or another, the light therapy, or, or you know, together with uh, drug rational drug therapies, will be coming through. 